Welcome, everybody. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology, coming to you live from San Jose, not San Jose, California, <laughs> San Jose, Costa Rica. And joining me is my good friend, Richard Butler from Barcelona, Spain. Hey, Richard, how also are you Also coming to you live, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm you're live. I'm glad you're live. Awesome. So in this webinar, we want to talk about searching for self. And yes. before we came on the line, which are on live, Richard, you talked a little bit about validation. So let's uh, dive into that a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a topic that that came to me, and I, and if I'm completely honest, it came to me after my the, uh, a visit from my 13 year old daughter, because she seemed to have to now. Uh, validate and get friends to do something on Snapchat. I don't really understand Snapchat, but there was something about streaks that every day you have to keep sending messages to people in order to get these streaks. And these streaks validate you and say, you know, you have good friends or whatever it is. I'm not quite sure. But then I started to look further into this and I was thinking, we look at Instagram, we look at Facebook, and a lot of people are posting and I'm a little bit guilty of it as well, but they're posting everything about themselves on Instagram. And I've seen one trend that I've seen more and more is people, and it seems that they have a photographer following themselves because they put up a selfie, but the selfie's from about five feet away and they're thinking like this or they're looking away into the distance. And it's interesting. It, it was an interesting concept. And I said, I want to talk to you about, about this, Scott, and get your views on it and, and see what you think as well. But we have this need to be validated. And I think it comes from not knowing who we are. Well, and, and I, when I hear that, my biggest question is like, who are we? Like, this is, a, this is like a very, very deep question. And so when you ask the question, who am I or who are you? Like, what are you really asking? And I mean, because I don't even understand the question, right? Am I atoms or am I a mind? Am I a soul? Am I this body? Am I a dad? Am I a son? Am I a cousin? Am I a brother? Am I a podcast? Am I someone who travels? And am I just visiting? Am I a visitor to San Jose? Like, I don't really understand who, who what the right, what the right answer. Please validate this. Give me an A, Richard. What is the answer to who am I? Right. And so what, where I flip from there is, do I need, like, is it, is it a knowable question? Do, and, or is there, a, is there a hole somewhere? Like when I think of validation, I think of it totally differently than the who am I question. I think of if I need to be validated, uh, is that different than the pat on the back? Is it, you know, good job, Scott? Mm. So, I'll let you jump in because well I guess it's true the question who am I is such a simple question but it's so complex to answer because when I talk to people and I say you know who are you oh I'm I'm Richard I'm a life and business coach but that answer is telling me what you are or as you brought up uh, I'm a dad I'm a I'm a I'm a husband but again, these are roles that you're playing. So, uh, well, not roles that you're playing, but roles that you have in your life. So you are not an accountant because what is an accountant? You are, you are not just a dad. You're more to that. Now, you got very deep into it saying, is it that I'm atoms? Is that what I'm made up of? But I think it is who the person is. What is their essence? If we can define what their essence is. So I would be, if somebody says, who am I? I would be looking at answers like, you know, I'm a loving person, I'm a giving person, I'm a humble person. And it's, to me personally, and I'm interested to know your thoughts as well, it is the traits. But from what I see on, from what I see on Facebook and, and uh, Instagram and, and other social medias, yeah, in, in the old days it was, well done, Scott, you did a good job, pat on the back. But now it's an actual tap on the likes. Because going back to the idea of my daughter, my daughter posts a picture. And in a couple of hours, she gets 103 likes. I post a picture, and in two days, I might get seven. And I'm, whoa! <laughs> but I'm not just looking for the validation. But this is what worries me, that there's, there's a whole different generation 
uh, from 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 ourselves a younger sort of uh, from early teens or what they used to call them tweens 20s late 20s even early 30s that are looking for people to tell them how great they are on social media and they project so, an image of themselves on social media right and of course that image causes other people to be unhappy because like oh man i can't live nearly as good a life as that person's living and and this is the huge problem that i suppose in in uh, 10 years ago we were seeing um web pages where people were posting pictures and we weren't sure whether they were true or not they could have been stock pictures but now we're seeing people on instagram and they become these things that are called instagram influencers and they say, well, you know, I'm living this lifestyle, I'm living the other lifestyle, and they take a picture in a certain place, and then uh, two weeks later, they're in another place, et cetera. And yeah, I, I, think, I think we're looking at these people and we're saying, am I enough? And that is a dangerous question to be asking yourself, am I enough? Because, you know, it's, sometimes we, I guess we get jealousy from, from seeing what other people are doing, but maybe, maybe they're not doing all of those things or maybe there's another story behind that i think it boils down to self-esteem mm. really you know like uh when, and, and i i'm gonna go off on a little bit of a segue but when you were talking what popped in my head was the this old movie that i watched in my youth which was about a coca-cola bottle and in africa this guy is flying his two motor biplane over the de desert, he's drinking a Coca-Cola, it's a glass bottle, he throws it out, it lands, and Mumbaba finds it. Okay. And he thinks this is a gift from the gods, right? And then he takes it and he thinks, wow, like I can put water in it and carry water, I can use it to pound things because it's harder than anything that we have. And so he breaks it back to his family. <clears throat> and before very long, they're fighting over this bottle. Mama wants it to pound the, the corn and the kids want to play with it and he wants to do something and he realizes that this gift from the gods is a curse. So he goes off to find the gods to give back the bottle. And this is his journey. And he finds white people who, because he saw the man in the plane, right? And he gives them the bottle and they don't want it. And, they, and of course, he can't speak English, they can't speak whatever he's speaking, and he's trying to figure out what these gods want him to do. And he says, obviously, I have to get rid of it. So he then goes on another journey, comes to this big cliff, throws the bottle off the cliff, and returns back, and his family is happy again. And so outside influences, one lesson from this was outside influences done wrong can have a very negative effect on the, the people, in, in this case, it's your daughter. The outside influence of all these people liking or not liking can have, uh, and, but the, why do you care, right? Well, because there's some hole somewhere that needs to be filled and it's not being filled. And mm. so now the hole could be created by Facebook and Instagram, okay? You know, because it becomes this culture and they, you know, you need to get 200 likes. If you don't get 200 likes, you're no good, blah, 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 blah which, you know, so there's a problem that needs to be solved. Or it could be, I didn't, you know, my grade one teacher 50 odd years ago didn't like the fact that I always drew astronauts when it came to art class and got mad at me. And since then, I've never drawn anything ever again. And mm. I have this hole that just can't be filled in because blah, 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 blah. I mean, we can create all of these stories, right, about why it is. But if you if you need validation from an outside source, then where I think we need to, what I think we need to do is look at self-esteem. Mm. Why do I not hold myself in such high regard that I can let that bully say something nasty mm. and it'll, and I'll cry for a week, right? Mm. You know, I mean, there's, there's, and there's a difference between being hurt by something somebody does and being traumatized by something somebody does, right? Mm. And we all, react differently to traumatic situations and what you may think is traumatic I'm not what I think like what's your problem that's no mm. big deal right it's all so personal which of course then begs the question uh, there's no one size fits all solution because mm. 
what could cause my self-esteem probably you it, it problems you would probably just laugh at because uh, it's, you know that's no big deal it's such a personal area uh, and I, I I think I think with the with the social media aspect it's it's a huge vicious circle that starts to consume itself because you know maybe you 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 lack self-esteem so you put up some nice pictures of yourself and then you only get 10 likes and your friend gets 20 likes and then you think wow maybe i'm not good enough for this and then you try another and I, and i think it's very easy to get caught up in the circle because back in back in june if you may remember uh i took a month off from facebook because i think it was really getting to me too much because to a certain extent it could have been as well you know i'd, I'd post something that i thought was inspirational or i'd post something that i thought was excellent and then i'd see or a, a, a live video and it would get like 40 views and i'd see scott puts one up and it gets two thousand views and then i think well what's wrong with me and, and what am i doing wrong and then you try it again and it's negative reinforcement you keep going back like this so i i think there's the danger there that we go to social media or people go to social media for validation because there's something lacking and then when they don't get it it actually compounds that that feeling of of lacking of negativity yeah it's a, yeah. The, the social media is really interesting because i i post things and i watch what gets interaction and what doesn't mm -hmm. right and part of it i think is the way facebook is set up and there are certain things and if it hits these criteria mm -hmm. it doesn't show it to any i'm convinced it doesn't yes. show it to anybody right no and it is then, their fault <laughs> it is <laughs> their fault. i mean that's what i think right so that's the easy answer mm -hmm. uh but that's usually things like oh i saw this really funny ah oh, it's that actually if i see a really funny youtube and a video and I post it, I'll usually get a couple laughs or that was really good. But there'll be maybe more newsy, it's what I think is newsy in the world of podcasting. And I'll post that with a couple, you know, I'd probably take a quoted line or two from the article mm. and the link. And it's like hidden in a black box at the bottom of the ocean. Like there is no activity ever. And then I will post something, and like I'll write something like Scott's soliloquy, and I'll get you know ten comments on it, and then I'll write something that's maybe a little more political, and I'll get two hundred mm. comments on it, and I'll be oh, that was <laughs> no, like, and uh, it, but it's you know I watch, and I sometimes think like why did nobody comment on? I was I actually posted something I was really worried about because I actually tagged or hashtagged the TV station. And I thought, oh my God, when people see this, they're just gonna. But I just could couldn't help myself, right? I just didn't like what he what they were saying, mm. and totally disagreed with it. And so I put forth my points, and I think I had like one like and one comment. And I was like, are you kidding me? Two days I've been watching this post, waiting for it to blow up, and nothing happened. Like, how could that be, right? So my fear was totally, uh, you know. N not not needed at all. Like I just mm. didn't need to worry about. It. But then you know you see people and they post something and it's a little bit uh, controversial and like thousands of people are talking about it. So that was that was kind of my fear. So I haven't been able to figure out why or how that happens. So, mm. um, but I agree with you. I think that a big part of the problem that we have is we don't take our kids outside into the parks, into nature, to a beach, to a mountain, to a river, to a waterfall and just spend time with them without everybody having the phone. It's like you have to have a phone. Nice. And, and I think that is the, is the big problem. Like mm. I was in, uh, well, near Agadir in Morocco and I had a working place and I'm on the fourth floor and I'm looking out over the town. It's a village of about 2000 people. And most children that I see, and tell me if, if you see any that are not like this, are they're babysat by an iPad or a tablet, or they're constantly watching TV, or they have a whole pile of toys, but normally, like, they're looking, they're, I've seen three-year-olds, and they're punching away at, you know, on the iPhones and stuff like this, and when they don't have that iPad or iPhone, they are miserable to be around. 
Like they're mm. like, daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy, I want to do this. So they're pulling out flour and spilling it on the floor or whatever. They're just getting into trouble, right? Mm. They don't know how to be with themselves. Mm. So now I could be totally wrong. And it's just the, you know, the four or five or six kids I've seen and heard about. But this is kind of my view of very young children. And uh, mm. And, and I would agree with that because what comes to mind is that uh, we were watching, we recorded a program and they were talking about the effects of tablets, et cetera, on kids. And there was one kid, I think it was in, in France, and he had very disruptive behavior, screaming, shouting, everything. And the only thing that would calm him down was the tablet. And this psychologist said, no, he needs to break away from that tablet to be able to interact with people. They took the tablet away and the first couple of days were hell. And he, he wouldn't speak when he had the tablet or anything. And suddenly, after a week, after two weeks, he was a completely different child. Yeah. And what happened was they eventually gave him back the tablet and he reverted back to his old ways. And I often think of um, Pavlov's dogs that were trained to hear a, a bell. And every time they heard a bell, they would eat or they would get food. And this became a pattern. So you hear a bell you get food. And it got to the point where as soon as they rang the bell, the dogs would start to salivate, even though there was no food. And I think we're like that. And I just had to shut down my Facebook there because I could hear the ping. But we are like Pavlov's dogs. And we have been yeah. trained by social media, by iPhones, by Androids, by Facebook, by social media, that when we hear a ping, we have to react. Yeah. Because I think if we put all our phones down in the middle of the table and said, OK, they're just going to ping away. I wonder how many people would last an hour without breaking <laughs> to pick up the yeah. phone. <laughs> They'd have to. They would have to. And the other thing to think of on this point of technology is what are the engineers and the designers' job? Mm. Their job is to make this device a device that you cannot live without and that you're constantly phoning on, constantly using, constantly, 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 constantly. That's their job. So, of course, the way the light comes, the way the flickers come, the way the image are the way it helps you all of that stuff what's the Facebook apps jobs to keep you on there 24 7 what's the Instagram apps job keep you on there 24 7 what does Google want they want you searching 24 7 and so they don't think about social interaction mm -hmm. programs activities and everything else and so before I forget I want to go back to close the loop on uh, Taganut, which was the town near Agadir in Morocco. I'm up on the fourth floor. I'm looking over the city. And on a third floor, which is, you know, there's a building that has three floors. And on the top of that is a woman, a mother, and she is working away, grinding something or whatever. And she's quietly working. There's no radio blaring. There's no noise aside from the pounding that she's making of she's, or she's weaving, like whatever it's not, it is. It's not with the Coca-Cola bottle, is it? No, no Coca-Cola bottle in sight. And she has two children. And one is like a two years and one is like five years. And they are totally, so that basically just to have, to have the image, there is a flat roof. There is like a wall around it that's higher than the children. There is a gate that's closed. There is a small little room built on top of this flat roof. And the mom is in the doorway so the children cannot get in and she is doing whatever she's doing it's hard for me to i don't remember and it was hard mm. for me to see and these two children all they had was themselves and one of them had a little broom so one of them would sweep a little bit and then stop and and they were both playing with nothing and and i mean i watched them for half an hour because i was waiting for them to run to their mom and say mommy whatever or i was waiting for them to mm -hmm. you know where's my iphone or i was waiting for something but they were totally content playing mommy was there i was safe i was secure i wasn't hungry and they you know so it i just went like wow like they don't need parents to entertain them Mm. But we have spent all of our time being taught, well, as parents, we're taught, look after your kids. Oh, they're crying in public. Like, that's how bad is that? Mm. Oh, this, oh, that. Control your kids and everything else. And it was just like, and the other part of it, of course, is, you know, how much of a relationship do you have with your children when you get up at 7 in the morning and go to work and don't get back till 6, and at 7.30 they go to sleep? 
That's mm. the other part of it. I mean, they, they were with their mom all day. And so they had, this was just the way it was. I mean, they just, there was no thinking about yelling and screaming and crying. And I'm sure that there were times when they would yell and scream and cry. Mm. But it just blew my mind that I watched them for an hour. And this was obviously what they do all day. And, you know, okay, so they're not watching Sesame Street. And they're not learning the Arabic alphabet. But they're also just kids being kids, right? Just and I'm using their imagination. Using their imagination and they're playing. And I'm sure that there would be times of the day where the moms would all get together and the kids would all play. I mean, I don't know. I just, yes, all yes, I wanted no, to point no. out was the kids do not, do not grow. They, do, they are not innate yelling and screaming and carrying on because they don't have an iPad. Mm. That is not mm. an innate behavior. That is a learned behavior. And us parents are responsible for it. Yeah, true. Well, I was thinking when you were when we were talking about devices there, that I read somewhere that when Apple launched the uh, Apple Watch, one of their key premises was we're taking you away from your screen, so that you don't need to always have an iPhone. <laughs> and this was meant to be this was meant to be a plus thing, but now what happens is, and, and and I have one, and I love Apple as you know, but now what happens is instead of a ping, you get a buzz on your wrist. So instead of looking at a big screen, you're looking at a small screen. So, and of course, we're not we're not saying that the technology companies are the devils, etc. But it's just interesting to see that of how how hooked we are to to the technology. I remember when I met you actually in Dublin, and I said, "Give me your phone number, and I'll I'll call you." And you were like, "I don't have a phone." And I was like, "What do you mean you don't have a phone? I have an iPad." And I said, "Yeah, but you need to have a phone." And you said to me, yeah, and I remember I was sitting in the coffee shop, you came into the train station, and you were trying to hook up to the Wi-Fi so that you could actually get my Facebook messages. <laughs> this guy, he needs a telephone, you know? <laughs> but I think it's kind of a relief not to have that constant need. But we always, and actually it was, it was one of my, um, my colleagues who, who, who used to work in Barcelona, she's back in Canada, she once said to me, it's FOMO. I was like, huh? What's FOMO? And do you know what FOMO is? No. Fear of missing out. Ah, okay. And she was like, you don't know what FOMO is? And I said, no. <laughs> but this is what it is, that we are a generation, or there are generations, or we're being told that we could be missing out on something. Mm. And, and I'm super guilty of that. I'm super guilty of... I, I'm lo really looking forward to the new um, EOS when they bring it, uh, I iOS when they bring it out on Apple, because... They're going to be able to record your screen time of how long you spend on applications. I really? know that. Yeah, that's I, I, I believe there's something that's coming in on that, and I, and I think I could be wrong that you'll be able to block out times and just say it's an hour a day on Facebook. Because if I looked at my phone, I probably check my email. I'd be embarrassed to say, so I'll say every 15 minutes. Hmm. It's not the truth. <laughs> I'd be embarrassed to say the truth. But it's this fear of missing out, you know? Ah, and, that's and sometimes, you know, when you go away and you don't check your email for a week, you come back and there's nothing really new. There's some guy wanting to send you 50 million US dollars. And he did that two weeks ago and three weeks ago. And there's another guy who's trying to sell you the latest gadget or the latest software that's going to give you number one rankings in Google or Viagra, whatever it may be, but it's always the same. It's it's always the same. There's nothing really important. I would say I get probably about four important emails a day, and one of them is probably yours, Scott. Saying, <laughs> I was going to say that you, you you stepped on my joke. Uh, <laughs> but I think, like when you're getting back to self-esteem and uh, what's happening with that. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are tied to this technology, and the technology is very manipulative. And yes. we don't have time to, like if you go for a three hour hike up a mountain and you see this magnificent waterfall, that is, to me just ramps up my self esteem, right? I just think, wow, like what a great day I had. I got the fresh air, I got the exercise, I got to see this amazing thing out in nature. And if I'm sitting by my computer day in, day out, or on a phone day in, day out, like what is the oh wow moment that I have? You can see the photo of me doing the hike. <laughs> yeah, and then I think, oh, how come I'm not doing that hike? Or but it's <laughs> 10 likes or mm -hmm. 200 likes, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, we've associated not what we've done, 
but what somebody else has done self-esteem for ourselves and mm -hmm. and i think it's a real problem and it's going to get worse if we don't as a society start doing something about it because in many ways we've taken the easy way out right like we've we've trained our kids oh you're acting up well here's an ipad play a game on it and now it's kind of an educational game you're going to learn to spell so it's okay and then that's all they do then it becomes i want peace and quiet and the kid is driving me crazy. Here's the iPad. And that's totally wrong. You should be spending that time with, and of course, it's because we get up at seven in the morning and we don't get home till six. We're tired. We're hungry. We're, we're exhausted. We're burnt out. We're overwhelmed. We have all these responsibilities and blah, 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 blah. Right. So we need to look, I think, at our whole society and how we've structured lives and our lives and our lifestyles and say, what do we need to do to change it? Yeah, I, and I, I think you're, you're perfectly right. Can I can I share my screen here, Scott? Because I want to show sure. people something. No, I'm not an expert on Google Hangouts. You're gonna have you to just see. mouse over to the left, and you should see a little menu appear. Um, and then there's a green arrow that's a screen share. Uh, that's it. Okay, so well, let me see. Let me just make sure. Now, I think for a second, you're going to see hundreds of you and me. But what I wanted to share, if you can see my screen there, Mm, nice one. Yeah, this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I remember from doing psychology in, in, in college and then teacher training that we talk about this, that this is the pyramid of where we have to get to, which is like the self-actualization and how we actually go through this these phases. So, for example, if, if I don't have uh, if I don't have somewhere to sleep, I don't really care about being loved and belonging. If I don't have um, safety, I'm not really going to care about self-esteem. So we have to build our way through here. And I think probably most of us are at this point. And then these people who are going to the social medias, etc., are probably at they're trying to get into this area here of the love and belonging. Because when they get the love and belonging, they get more self-esteem. And then the eventual thing is to try and obviously get to self-actualization, which is a very tough part because this is where you are asking the question, who am I? And you're looking for the really deep answers. Um, what's your what's your thoughts on that, actually? No. I love Maslow's hard kid needs. Mm. I think uh, I think absolutely. If you don't look after your security, if you you know if you're hungry, if it rains and you're getting wet, um, Things the basic needs. Yeah. You you how can you spend time thinking about the important things of of the world or of your life or what you want to do? You, when you're thinking about how I'm going to eat tomorrow, you're not thinking about uh, should I get a university education? No. Right? You know. And I think this is a big problem. I think we have. Are, as I'll put the blame on society in general, we have created the society where everyone feels like they're in the, I'm still in the security thing. Like there's very few people that spend a lot of time thinking about the deeper uh, issues of life, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. And so you need to, uh, we need to really look at like, why are we overwhelming people? Why are, and of course, part of it is, you know, the marketing, the technology, like you should have a 60, in screen oh is it 70 inch now okay mm -hmm. and uh you know that uh, resolution isn't good enough it needs to be 4k oh we're working on 8k are we okay 4K. it has to be 8k come on <laughs> yeah it has to be 8k you know and mm -hmm. you need to have the channels and so you need to have this type of car not that type of car and it's it takes discipline and persistence to get out of that mindset and to stay out of that mindset because you're constantly uh you know because Oh man, like I was in a really like a wreck of a car in uh, where I think it was uh, I'm trying to think of what country it was now. It wasn't Barcelona, I can tell you that much. It was Kenya or it was it was really a wreck of a car. And and then I got to Panama and the the taxi was beautiful like it was like brand new car and and it was smooth riding you weren't bouncing up and down and i was thinking, oh this is a lot nicer than that other car that i can't remember what country i was in driving and 
So then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want that. It's like, well, do you, yeah, you want it, but do you need it? And will you let your wants overrun your needs? Ah, interesting point. Mm -hmm. And the chances are you, we want all, like there's a, there was a, a show about some lady in Hong Kong. She had 500 shoes, right? That's an example of want overcoming need. Right. And now she had all the money in the world. She could have 500 shoes if she wanted. Uh, but really, what sort of legacy is that? You can be known as the woman who has 500 shoes versus the woman who, you know, fed 500 tribes in Africa that were starving or something. And, and I think that's a really important is your needs versus your wants. Because, for example, going back to, to, to Maslow there, if I don't have shelter, well, that's the only thing that I, I, I need. And I'm not going to care about the latest iPhone, but suddenly I have shelter, I have safety. Oh, the latest iPhone, yeah, I want it. Do I need it? No. So, uh, and the example is they say, what, every two years people change their iPhone. I think my iPhone is like three years old. Do I need a new iPhone? No. Do I want one? Yes. But it's when your wants, as you say, overcome your needs. Um, the, the problem is that you will always be chasing this elusive want, 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 because all the manufacturers know that if they sell something, people are going to want it. And there's no end to it because they have their life cycles and they have their, their product cycles and it's just going to keep going. And if you are always chasing wants, you have to look at it and say, well, do I need this or not? Because the problem is then the only way to fulfill yourself is to get the next iPhone, to get the next Apple Watch, to get the next whatever it may be, sorry. Um, and this is just go ahead and answer that, Richard, and we'll listen as you talk. No, no, no. It was it, it was to take a tablet. So if I keel over, at least at least I was talking about something that I need rather than something that I actually want to take. So oh, it wasn't a phone call then. No, 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 no. It was it, it, it was a tablet to take. But so so this is the problem that I used to be quite materialistic. I used to like to have lots of nice things. And the problem is that that got me into some serious debt because I wanted this and I wanted that. And I didn't need a lot of things. And now I become more, I still like my luxuries, but I say, okay, I have a MacBook Air that's three years old. I would love the latest MacBook, but it works fine. So I don't actually need the latest uh, thing. But if I was chasing those wants, I'd be going out, well, Bertha would kill me if I did, but I'd be going out and I'd get a loan and say, well, I'll get a 3,000 euro uh, MacBook because I want it. But no, no. So we have to be careful of that, about our needs and our wants. And it was a, a very, very important point, I think, that you brought up. Yeah. And to, um, you know, just to talk about the phone, since I am a bit of an outlier and I don't have one, uh, I've been traveling the world for the last 18 months. I've been in Kenya, I've been in North Africa, I've been in the Middle East, I've been in Eastern Europe and Western Europe, and I've been in Central and America and the northern part of South America. And in that uh, 18 months, there's been two times when I thought, oh man, I wish I had a phone because it would have been just so much easier to just call. But most of the time, I just go talk to the taxi driver and, and they call for me because <laughs> usually it's because I can't find a place that I'm supposed to be staying in and the taxi driver's job is to get me there. So it, it works out to be fine. But okay. uh, as you may or may not know, I've been thinking about getting a phone and the reason I've been thinking about getting a phone is because I want a small camera that I could just, you know, put on a selfie stick and talk, walk around and talk. <laughs> not because of the phone, because, you know, I have, I have an iPad, right? So it's just too big and too cumbersome to try to use to take videos. Too to, and too, too, yeah. And so, and I have a, a proper, really nice DSL camera for taking yes. really good shots. But there are times when you just don't want to be so obvious about taking the pictures. And mm -hmm. so that's why I was thinking about getting this phone. And so I was looking at like who had the best camera and who had the best this and, you know, basically camera. And mm -hmm. It's like ah, like I can get a really good cat, you know, really good phone with a really good camera, and it's like eight hundred bucks. And I'm going, you know, do I really want to spend eight hundred bucks on a camera? Mm. And the answer is like no. Like in my mind, I'm thinking I really just want to spend two hundred bucks, which means I have to wait for these cameras to go get three or four years older, and then people want to sell them either cam old camera, and it's got the 
it's got the old phone and it's got the camera on. I guess I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do about that, because I have things that I want to spend. I don't mind spending lots of money on, and I have things that I don't want to spend lots of money on. And for me, the phone is. It used to be when you bought a house, it came with a phone. Like you mm -hmm. never cost you anything to have a phone, right? It's a landline, and you had to stand in one place, and the cord was only this long. But uh, you know, I'm just. I have that part of, you know, ingrained in me where it's just like, oh, if there's phones everywhere and you don't, you just, it comes with a phone. You don't pay for a phone yeah, unless you want to buy a fancy phone that's a landline phone, right? So this idea of buying a new phone every couple of years or every year because they come up with a new model, actually, it's not how I grew up. Mm. However, it's a trap that I see a lot of people are in right now. And, and 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 we've been trained. We've been trained for it because, for example, I'll admit I'm looking forward to Apple are doing an event on the 12th of uh, September, which is next week, next Wednesday, at time of recording. And I'm really excited to see what they bring out. But the fact of the matter is the device does exactly the same thing. It might do it a millisecond faster and the camera quality might be a little bit more. But we've been trained to expect this, that every two years is an Apple cycle where they bring out an S or they bring out whatever it may be. And then in another two years, they'll bring out the 12, or the 13, or the 14. But they've trained us well that we wait for things like that. And I think that's some of it that, you know, these guys are marketers. They need to make money because they're investing a lot of money. And unfortunately, I suppose we are the gullible ones rather than them. Because if we weren't gullible to their marketing strategies, they would be nothing without us, as they say. Um, I yeah, take I a little bit of a contrarian position to that, in that um, if I, one of my favorite books, and I recommend it to everybody, is Influence by Caldini. And I'm not sure if it's yeah, 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 yeah. John Caldini. And he looked at how people were in, how he was influenced at first. That's how he got interested in it. And then he got really mad because. As we have developed as a society, we have unwritten rules, one of which is like the law of reciprocity. So if, uh, if you're in trouble and I give you, you know, an apple or something like that, then uh, you know, a week later when the saber-toothed tigers are attacking me, you're going to come over and beat off the saber-toothed tigers and help me out. Right? It wasn't necessarily an apple for an apple, but it was reciprocity. Yeah. And when you know that, this is why when people give you things for free and then they want you to pay for them or they want you to buy something else, this is abusing the law of reciprocity. Mm. And what he fortunate thing that he writes in there is if you understand that you've been – you, the laws are being abused and you've been manipulated, then you are not required to follow them. <laughs> okay. In other words, don't feel bad when you don't buy something, when someone gave you something for free and then tried to manipulate you into buying something that's a couple hundred bucks or whatever. So you have to understand that the large companies, the Coca-Colas, the, the uh, McDonald's, the Nikes, the Apples, the Microsofts, they have huge huge budgets and the only purpose of these budgets is to manipulate us so you, they need to take you know so a lot of people say well you need to take responsibility for no i mean yes and no if you if if you are given a certain type of food and because of the way it's been manipulated and designed it triggers off the dopamines and you're addicted to that food that's not 100% your fault, right? mm. particularly when you had no idea and you had no plan on eating that particular food and now you're addicted to it. It's kind of like, you know, the, the guy who gives you a shot of heroin or cocaine or something and try this, it's free. And you yeah. just go, oh, yeah. And now you're hooked on it and you're going through withdrawal and you'll do anything to get it. Like that guy's responsible. You're not responsible. Yes. You're responsible for now that you know not to do that again. Okay. But all this is subliminal, and it's, so it's easy to say, well, you, know, you should have a stronger uh, discipline. You should be more this or more that. And no, you're designed the way you're designed, and these people know how you're designed better than you do, and yes. they know how to manipulate your design to get what they want. So who's, you know, where is the, the line of responsibility starts to blur? And, and you know, because there are all food companies – have departments where they taste test and they chemicals to see which sets off what part of your tongue so that they can get, when you eat it it's like oh yeah man i want to have that 
And of course, most of us aren't aware. So we're just sort of half asleep through life and we're going, oh, Big Mac, oh, Coca-Cola, oh, iPhone. And it just pull out the wallet and they don't think about it, right? And I think that's really wrong. I don't, I'm not 100% sure what the answer to that problem is, but one answer is the companies need to take responsibility for what they're designing and what they're creating and the results of it. Mm. And they don't, right? Mm. I, I, think, I think that actually loops us back to the very first question of who am I? Because a, a lot of the times, People are somebody or something because of the brands that they wear. And we, <laughs> yes. you know, we associate them with that. He's got an and iPhone. And teams, right? The local teams. Like when you, the chances are you live in Barcelona, you probably do not cheer for Real Madrid. Mm. I, lived in Van, I live in Vancouver. I do not cheer for the Edmonton Oilers. Mm. Uh, but you know what? I used to live in Winnipeg, and the Winnipeg Jets was my team, and now I live in Vancouver, and Vancouver Canucks is my team. So you, it happens where, you know, when you change environments or whatever, we all want to be part of something. We all want to be part of the group, and it, in sports in particular, it's your town, your team. And we want to fit in. And we want to fit in. Mm -hmm. And and you know and and then this is it and and it extends to that idea of you know my God look at that person on Instagram they are somebody because they are wearing Gucci they are wearing Louis Vuitton they have to be somebody but I'm nobody because I'm just wearing whatever brand of clothes a non branded clothes and again this is the problem you know that that who are you well I'm nobody because I don't have an iPhone or I don't have a fancy camera whatever it may be. So some of, the, some of it is that we have to explore that and we have to look deep inside and sort of say, well, okay, I have to accept who I am. I'm Richard. I'm a nice guy. I get on well with people. I can develop courses. I can do whatever. I'm very sociable, etc. And that's it. it. You have to be able to accept yourself. But the problem is a lot of people aren't because, oh, I look on Instagram and so-and-so is so thin or so-and-so is so muscly and I'm not as muscly as that person. So I can't be as popular. I can't get as many likes. But we're looking more at a materialistic thing, a more physical thing rather than the deeper. And I think that is where the answer to who am I comes from. When you look deep inside yourself and you reflect and you see what is, what is Scott made up of, you know? It's not because Scott has an iPhone that I, uh, well, an iPad that I think he's great or it's not because even because he's a dad, because it's the fundamental, that essence of who Scott is, that is why I like him. And I think that's what we need to think about when we, when we, when we talk about the question, who am I? I would agree. And uh, I don't know what else to say at this point. <laughs> I, I was saying, okay, did the internet connection go down? Do you not hear me? Are you waiting for it? But, I mean, you know, I think you kind of ended, you put it on a nice bow on it. I think you've sort of said everything that needs to be said. <laughs> well, you know, this, I've, I've been thinking a lot about this and we've been having discussions about it. And this is where I sort of came to the idea, okay, I want to explore this a little bit more. So I did a lot of digging and I did a lot of self-reflection as well. And if I, if I look at myself, if I look back 15 years, I was, I was living in Ireland. I was, I was married to somebody else. I had, a, I had a really, really good salary. I went through a period of about four years where I think my salary doubled. Not and good. I thought I was living a good life. But really, that wasn't the case. So I thought, about, I thought about that. I thought about where I am now, the connections that I've made, the people that I've, I've really bonded with. And I started to explore that. And because we had started looking at Udemy courses, I said, okay, well, what about that? What if I were to explore for myself and also explore for other people? And that's where I came up with that concept that, that, that we put a, a course together of um, the search for self. Because I think it's more and more important now because the search for self, if I'm looking for myself, it's a picture like that. It's a picture by the Eiffel Tower, it's a picture in Colombia, it's a picture wherever it may be. But it, it's not really you. It's, it, it is literally a selfie, a reflection of you, but it's not really the you. So 
I thought, okay, well, let's explore that idea more and let's start searching for this off. And that actually, as, as I explored it, I said, well, this is not just one course because there's so much that we can talk about because there's so much about the, the first step as, I, uh, as we do within the course is self-awareness of actually being aware of who you are. Because a lot of times that's it. We don't know, we're not aware of, of, of anything that's going around because we're kind of looking very blinkered. So, you know, that's where, that's where we developed that. And that's where if people are interested in trying to start on a journey, because it is a journey, it's not something that we can say to you, take the course, it's a two hour course, and you will be enlightened. That's, that's not it. This is a journey that I know myself. If I look back, it's taken me 15 years to come to where I am now and to be in that happy place that I'm in now. And, you know, it's a good start for people. If you are seriously asking, a, asking yourself that question, like, what am I doing? Where am I in life? Why am I here? Uh, how did I get here? Well, then I think a good start would be probably looking at uh, the search for self. I totally agree. And uh, before you, I think self-awareness, self-knowledge are crucial mm -hmm. for happiness. Like a lot of times people say, well, if you know, if you have this, if you have that, if I had more money, if I doubled my income, if I had a prettier girlfriend or a handsomer boyfriend, or if I uh, traveled the world, or if I lost 10 pounds, if I put on 20 pounds of muscle, if I, if, if, if I had a better job, if I had a better boss and you know, there's not, that's not saying that people can't make you miserable. Uh, certainly, there's lots of people that try, uh, mm -hmm. but the happiness and the and uh, fulfillment comes from within. And yes. and the only way you get there is by understanding who you are, mm -hmm. who you're, you know, what yourself is at the core, whether you can articulate it or not. Okay, I don't know that I could articulate it very well, but I'm pretty confident about who I am at my core and what yes. my values are. And so. Uh, this course is an exceptional beginning of that journey. It's a great introduction to Richard, and we're going to be continuing to go along that journey, and we certainly hope that uh, everybody watching joins us on that journey because it's an amazing journey to fulfillment. I, I, and that's it. And, and you've touched on a lot of things there of your core beliefs, your core values, which a lot of people don't even know what their values are or their beliefs, and they believe certain things, but... You know, what I believed 15 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago is completely different to what I believe now. I have some core beliefs of obviously to do good and not to do uh, anything illegal or wrong or hurt people. But there's lots of beliefs that I had years and years ago that are no longer true. I wasn't good enough to do this. I wasn't good enough to do that. And we have to strip all that back. So the, the course is is a little bit sort of tricky because you're going to have to explore a lot into yourself and you're going to have to be completely honest with yourself. And not everybody is at that point that they can actually look deep within themselves and be able to come up with these answers. But what this course is going to help you move along through that phase. And as I say, it's, you know, it's one course, it's two courses. And we need to, 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 to finish off the, the third installment of it. But this is a journey. And this is a journey that's really going to help you, I think, help anybody you know watching this or if they're watching it on the replay i really do think it is going to help because even doing the course myself creating it has helped me as well yeah well and the thing about self-awareness is we're like onions and we keep peeling these yeah. layers off and we never stop right mm. uh, it, it it does there is no it's an infinite onion <laughs> like because you can get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and and uh and you're always going to learn new things about you. And also, it's not just a, an onion that you're peeling off. It's an onion that's growing because you're having experiences. You're meeting other people. You're doing different things. And, of course, that creates more layers as well. So, uh, But there's really nothing better than being uh, aware of and understanding you know, what's going on. Mm. You start to understand what's going on around you. And mm. it's a really nice feeling because... Uh, most people have no clue what's going on around them, to be quite honest. No, it's true. And, and I never realized that until I was uh, on the Isle of Rhodes in Greece. And, uh, you know, I was staying at this yoga retreat and I was, you know, picking this thing up or picking that stuff up. And I was just, you know, not that I was like working at it. It was just, oh, there's this glass mm -hmm. here and 
I'll just take it. I'm on my way to the kitchen. I'll just take it with me. Mm -hmm. And everybody else was leaving the glass. And the yoga uh, leader said, you know, you're very aware of what's going on and what's around you. And I go, oh, thank you, you know. And I didn't realize when she was saying that that she was contrasting me to the other people that were there that were totally oblivious to everything that was going on around them. But uh, you, you start walking through life very differently when you're not, you know, sleepwalking. Mm. I don't, I, a lot of people talk about awakening and I want to be very clear that I am not awake. <laughs> you know, I know that I'm asleep. <laughs> that's the, that's the only thing I know. Like I know I am sort of aware of things as, as most people just sleepwalk through life and they're not aware of anything. Mm. But I've had a few of my friends say, you're very awake. And I go, no, 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 no. Mm. I'm not. I am awake enough to know that I'm still sleeping. Ah, which is which is a very good point. But actually, that and actually, that's something that we we should actually, you know, get on a, a webinar again about is talking about being mindful. And I and, mm. and I know uh, I, I I know that uh, it, it's nearly lunchtime for you. I can <laughs> I can hear people preparing things. I think, and it's and it's past my dinner time. But it's it's something that that we need to get on a webinar as well and talk about that, about being mindful and being aware because this complements your whole journey as well because if you're not mindful, if you're not in the present moment, you're missing everything and you're thinking in the past, you're thinking in the future and you cannot be, you cannot be um, self-aware and you can't find yourself when that happens. The other thing is finding yourself, I always thought finding yourself meant I had to go away to India to an Amazon forest, but you can find yourself right at home. You don't have to be going off exploring. You just need the tools to help you. So I, I want to uh, jump in and say it's okay to go to the Amazon forest. And oh, India. Of <laughs> and he says as he's traveling through Costa Rica. Uh, of course, it, 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 if, 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 if that works and if you can, no, 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 it's perfect. But always know that no matter where you go, you're always going to be there. So if you're trying to run away from something to find yourself in another country, that thing that you're running away from is actually probably deep inside you. So you 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 will always have to have to sort of face that demon, so to speak. You know. Yes, and it really, I I firmly believe there are demons that we oh, have yes. to, we have to face, we have to battle, and uh, I mean not necessarily spouting fire horns or anything no. like that, but but you come face to face with them and. It's the easy thing to do is to get out your iPad or your iPhone and uh, you know take a picture and hope for some likes and uh, that a friend of mine says you know you have short term pain for long term gain or uh, short term gain for long term pain yeah. and oftentimes when we escape into our phones or we escape into movies or drugs or alcohol or fantasies or whatever it is we escape into. Uh, then that's creating a long-term pain and it's a lot better to deal with it right now get it over with get it resolved it's usually not nearly as bad as we fear because fear tends to magnify everything and then you're you're, back. you're ready to blossom and to live the life that you were put here to lead as opposed to the one that uh, our society says that you were put here to lead I, I think what's what's come up here is like my mind is buzzing here of, of of more webinars that we can actually do to 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 help people because you've brought up so many different things there that uh, we could talk for another two three four hours because there is so much and everything all of this the approach is all holistic because everything is interconnected we can't just separate one thing as you say it's a, escapism is another thing that that a lot of us part partake in in some shape or form. One of them is looking at your phone because you don't want to communicate with people when you're uh, uh, on the bus. For example, I went out for lunch today with, with uh, some work colleagues and you're looking around and there's a couple and they're both looking at the phone. And who knows, they could be Facebook messaging each other to say, what do you think of the restaurant? I think it's very good. And it's like, damn it, put the phone down. <laughs> be in the moment. You know? That's right. So in the description, I'll put a link to Searching for Yourself. Our course will give you a really good discount. And, yeah, uh, excellent. We want you to join us on this journey, and I promise you, you are going to see growth that you yeah, would never, ever imagine seeing. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Scott. Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day uh, to, uh, to, to join me on this webinar. 
And My pleasure, Richard. I'm always excited to spend time with you. Thank you, Scott. I will talk to you very, very soon. Great. Thanks, Scott. And thanks Goodbye. for joining us, everybody. We really appreciate you, too. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Excellent. Thank you, Scott.